Hey Outboard fans, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to get into this lower unit. We're going to tear it completely down. Interestingly enough, the Ficht motor that has the lower unit only has a different shift shaft in it. It looks like this will go right in there. So isn't it interesting? I can take a lower unit from one motor, put it in this one. Now I'm not 100% sure, but just looking at the pictures from the old one to the new one, looks like it'll match up. So that'll be pretty cool. In the meantime, my outboard motor buying guide, used outboard motor buying guide will soon be for sale on Amazon. It'll be $20. If you send me an email at keith at outboarddad.com with proof of purchase, I will offer you a free session, $200, $250 value for a half an hour to help you with a used outboard motor you're looking to buy, or maybe a boat with a used outboard motor you're looking to buy to help you have the best chance of having the best success by doing the due diligence and the tests. Let's get into this lower unit. Where do we begin? Hmm. We're just gonna start taking bolts out. I'm gonna see if I can get this top bearing carrier out. Sometimes it's a little tricky. If you watch my video on the Yamaha 115, it came, up, came out pretty easily. I have a feeling this one may fight us a little bit more. But we're gonna just take everything on the top here off. We're gonna take the shift shaft. We're gonna have to unscrew the shift shaft out of this. What I am going to do is I am going to count how many rotations and write it down so I can get it back in the same place. I'm a little concerned about the play in this and also the fact that this does not shift back and forth. We may find rusted up gears in there and this may be toast, but let's start taking it apart and see what we find. So I attempted to get the shift shift out first and it is jammed up in here. I'm curious now if that's the only problem. So I'm turning this sucker and I know it's disconnected underneath because I could hear it dangling in there. But man, is this jammed up in there? Let's crank it out the rest of the way. Okay, we got this off. Looks clean inside. I'm going to screw that shift shaft back down in there and see if we can get this to shift. Is it just bound up because that seal got all expanded? Forward, neutral, reverse. Shift's fine. Isn't that funny? Still don't like the play in this. Not, I, don't, I don't think that's normal. I think it's shimmed wrong. Or maybe it was taken apart and not shimmed right. So we're still going to pull this lower unit apart the rest of the way. So let's see if we can get this bearing carrier off next. Take the shift shaft back out. Interesting, we got it to shift. Still not going to be comfortable until I tear this down all the way. So I'm trying to now get that bearing carrier out. As soon as I tapped it around, it does move, so I know it's loose, but pulling it up is the tricky part. So I had an idea, something I was gonna try and do uh, a while back that I'm gonna try now, and here's what I'm doing. I took the, took my tap here, and just tapped just the cap. Now it only gets really fine threads in there, but 3816, and then I'm using the lower unit bolts. I have it just twisted a little bit, so when I tighten the bolts down, it hits the face, and I'm hoping it'll lift it up. Gotta try new stuff sometimes, right? So as it turns out, I didn't have to crank them down. As soon as, and I'll show you what I did. So these are 3816 bolts. As soon as I got two of them in there, as, you, as I told you, I already got it to shift a little bit. As soon as I started shifting, I said, hmm, what if I just shift back and forth and pull up with the bolts that are already in there? And let's see how it comes up. So here's our bearing carrier with our shims, right? So this is what's gonna keep our play going up and down. We're gonna look in the book and see what that's supposed to be exactly. So if you look at what I did, all I did was just make some fine threads inside these holes so that it would give me something to lift up on and able to get this out. So this is actually not in bad shape. We'll obviously have to get a new O-ring. Bearing is in good shape. Bearings down here look good. I'm pretty sure there's a nut at the bottom before this will come up the rest of the way. But I think we're gonna need some shims for this. So I think next, 
we'll get my magnet in here to get those out. I want to keep these really clean. Uh, we will clean them off before we, you know, finalize anything. Right now I'm not seeing any rust, but we're on the top end. It's at the bottom where the water is going to sit. So let's get the bottom out. Right, so this is going to have some thrust on it when that motor's cranking and we're spinning that lower unit, it's going to keep some thrust on it. So we want to make sure you have the right play on this. Keep it covered up in our rags. This may be a two piece shaft. I'll have to look it up in the book. Not sure how much you can see down inside here, but you can see the heads of those bolts, right? So there's bolts down in there. They screw to a ring that's in there and then there's a big snap ring in there, if I remember correctly. So we're gonna remove these bolts and then we have to pull this get bearing carrier out. We have to get a little creative. So the large snap rings that are in there, I took the pair of these pliers from Harbor Freight and I ground them so they catch on there and hopefully we can get them to come out. So now that we have the bearing carrier out, you see those snap rings in there. We're gonna take those out next. Then the whole assembly should come out with the gear. Then we can check the nut to make sure the nut is tight all the way. See how my Harbor Freight pliers work? Not so good yet. There we go, there's one. So that one is basically a stop for our bearing carrier so it doesn't go too far. Let's check the bearing carrier, right? There's bearings here on the inside and there's bearings here where the shaft seal is. We'll pull the shaft seal out and we'll clean all this up. Okay, you gotta squeeze it pretty tight, but they come out. So if you remember, we had four bolts that came out of there. So there, those four bolts thread into these four holes. So this goes in first, then that snap ring goes. So when you're tightening against it, this is what you're tightening against. This is kind of the moment of truth here. Let's see what these teeth look like. Uh, we can see our milky oil on there. But I don't see any chunks out of any of the teeth on this. Where the clutch dog goes in and out looks good. Now if you look close, you can see our gears in there, right? So let me see if I can spin it so you can see it better. So now you can see what's happening when we're turning. Now I can go up and down with my shaft. I'm moving up and down, but I think that's the second part of the shaft. I think that's just inherent to the two-piece why this goes up and down. Because if you saw, well, no, the whole thing is moving. We definitely need to, to shim that better. I'm wondering if someone pulled this apart, did a rebuild, and maybe didn't shim it the right way. So it can be a little tricky to do. If you saw, there was a nut on the bottom of that drive gear on the drive shaft. So I have some really thin, old school, like Billings wrenches somewhere in my box here. I haven't pulled a lower unit apart in a while that I'm going to be able to slip on there. Then we're going to put a pipe wrench on the shaft, loosen that up. I have a feeling since if it's been apart, that it should come apart. So let's check it out. So here's my old school wrench. Doesn't even have a name on it, but it's thin, right? You can see how thin it is. So I can get it in there. Now, if I didn't have the right size, I would just take one of my Harbor Freight wrenches and grind it down. But this old steel is a lot stronger. So let's get this in there. We're going to hold that nut and spin that shaft. So now my wrench is on the nut. I can put my pipe wrench on my shaft to turn it. And there we go. It's completely off. So my shaft can come completely out. Let's take a look at this. There's the threads on the bottom that that nut goes on. Notice this is like a corkscrew, so as this is running and forward, it brings the oil up so that the oil lubricates this. See how this is a two-piece shaft, and this wobbles. There's a roll pin in it, so you can see how this wobbles, so that is normal, because our bearing is down here on this part of the shaft. So this looks in good shape. Now I am going to clean up where my seals go around here, and be sure that it doesn't have too much of a ridge on it. It does have a good ridge on there. This may be the detriment of this 
maybe we can just get one of these shafts or this is why sometimes it's better just to have a low, new rebuilt or another lower unit let's get the rest of the gears out there's the nut so this is moving along nicely we're going to clean up some parts here it's going to take some time to do that we're going to get that drive gear out have to get in there with the magnet kind of finagle it to get it out of there shift it back and forth then we'll get the the other gear out but i have a feeling these gears are fine we just need to shim this better and get the right seals for it so it seals up not finding any problem we'll check that clutch dog maybe the clutch dog is worn from what i see on this side it looks okay we'll check the other side and we'll continue on with this project please like subscribe send me any comments that you have and we look to see you out on the water have a great day